in all the pines. Welcome to the MEL Show. Deep inside one of us, there is an aspiration. That's something that we all want to do. May that be big or small. But somehow, along the line, challenges happen. And when we hear about a story, or an inspiring story, or we read about it, then we get that oomph. Something like a voice saying, I gotta do something about it. And this evening, we are here to share with you many inspiring stories. And to help me welcome our first guest, we have Fuzzy right here. Say hello, Fuzzy. Doesn't he look handsome? And he is getting ready for the holidays. What a lovely hat. Fuzzy, let's welcome our first guest. It's actually about a hidden gem in Carolina. And these two partners are actually best friends too. Isn't that great? Yeah. They own a restaurant called It's Greek to Me. It is really the hidden gem. So help me welcome Jimmy Pastore and Jeff Fridge. Come on, Jimmy and Jeff. And I will see you in a little bit. Welcome back. Tonight we are joined by wonderful guests, Jimmy Pastore and Jeff Bridge, the restaurateurs, owners of It's Greek to Mix. Good to see you for having us. I'm glad you made special time for us here at Access Tucson. And the story or stories that you will share with us this evening will inspire many people. So, Jeff, tell us, what was your background? How did you get into this restaurant business? Well, let's see. We, uh, we always had a passion for owning our own restaurant. Uh, we, we met 33 years ago uh, cooking together in a Greek restaurant. And we thought to ourselves, you know, one day we have to do this for ourselves. Then we went down different paths into the, you know, corporate world, if you will, um, and then kind of came full circle, and, and here we are. We own a fantastic restaurant. Yeah, I remember back in 1982, right here in Tucson, we were working down on 4th Avenue, and uh, uh, we, we worked real closely together, became very, very good friends, were at each other's weddings, and have stayed we're in touch for pretty much our whole lives, and we've mm -hmm. talked over the years of... You know, someday we're going to go out and have to do that. We're going to have to go have our own restaurant. We got to have the best restaurant in Tucson. Okay. And and that's kind of what brought us to what happened 17 months ago, uh, is we took over a restaurant up in Catalina and given it a shot. Okay. So how many years are you now in the restaurant business? Well, we started. Uh, we took over July of last year. Oh, so we're, we're almost. Uh, have completed our first year and a half. Wow, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so while you're going through that process, what sort of challenges have you faced? Well, getting back into the restaurants after, you know, 30 years of being out of restaurants was a big enough challenge. Things okay. have changed over the years, and we've, you know, learning how to not all, you know, we both know how to cook. I cook a little better than he does. <laughs> but, you know, we had to, you know, working with hiring and all of the challenges that come with, you know, a different generation of people working for us. Because we used to work together at the age now that we have people working for us. Uh -huh. So not only do you deal with the food and the customers, but the people that you, that you hire and you employ and you, you know, help them earn a living. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's a great feeling because it's not just about us doing the restaurant. It's about every people, everybody that comes into the restaurant to eat plus the people that work there, how they support their families as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, 
while you two were trying to get used to being friends and business partners at the same time. There's got to be some funny stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. Um, well, I, 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 um, you know, Jeff and I, you know, started working together did that not work? back in 1982. He was the, uh, the broiler man. I was the saute man in the restaurant and we worked for a very crazy chef. And that was back in the days when, you know, things weren't so subdued in the kitchen with, with the chef. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, it was kind of like Hell's Kitchen 1982 with the guy that we worked with. Really? And I can't repeat some of the things that used to come out of his mouth like they, gotcha. they put on television yeah. okay. these days. <laughs> and, and we really realized that we didn't, you know, we saw what we did, you know, 30 years ago. And we kind of decided that we wanted to do a little bit different because we've had a 30 year span of being in the corporate world and then decided that, you know, we're going to take everything that we've learned over the last 30 years and try to incorporate that. And we walked into this restaurant and said, where do we buy the food? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? who turns on the gas? What, you, yeah. know, who, you know, who turns on the lights? Who yeah. pays that bill? Exactly. You know, that kind of thing. So okay. those were the challenges of actually running the business and then hiring the people and, and so there's some of the stories that we could tell but probably better not. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Okay. And, and for me I, I would say I would add that you know I've, I've dealt with leading people in the corporate world uh, on, on different programs and projects and um, you know th this is a lot different. This is a lot different because uh, you have people who uh, their livelihoods depend on um, great food, excellent service, uh, which which we do provide both, and uh, so that that's a little extra challenge as opposed to just you know like I said being in you know a, a big company mm -hmm. where you know that everything is going to be okay no matter how well you do. Right. You know. Well, speaking of great food and excellent service, I heard about your great awards. So we actually had the opportunity to visit your restaurant and, and talk. Okay. Go ahead. This is uh, one of our... Go ahead. This is our two uh, Best of the Northwest in 2014 awards. Oh, and so right now we're looking at, at the wine room, which is one of our two dining rooms. And this one has a nice ambience um, to it. it this, and this mural is uh, from Santorini, and this is in our uh, large uh, dining room, and provides a, a di different atmosphere in that it's it's almost like you're over there in Greece. Uh, yeah, it can get a little loud, but people have a fun time, and um, they include belly dancing and stuff like that. Well, what's interesting is we get people coming in from New York and Chicago and San Francisco. And this is our flaming Saganaki cheese. This is always exciting what happens. We especially like serving the people from the fire department when they come in. <laughs> I think this is fun. Yeah, this is a, 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 a cheese from Greece that we flame with brandy and put out with lemon and serve with pita bread. It's one of the most popular appetizers that we have in the restaurant. Jason Eaton, I'm the executive chef here. At, it's Greek to me. Um, first, I'd like to show you a Greek salad. This is our house-made, hand-rolled spanakopita, also served with our tzatziki sauce. And this here, and here we have our house-made baklava. And here we have Alex, our sous chef, slicing some gyro meat made with breadcrumbs, beef, and lamb, and certain spices. This is just wonderful Greek food. We got the combo appetizer, which had so many wonderful things. I've been to a lot of Greek restaurants, and this has to be the best Greek restaurant outside Greece. It is wonderful. That is the hidden gem in Catalina, and we definitely invite you to come out and visit. They have the best seafood, and for catering, you can always contact It's Greek to Me. Thank you, Jimmy and Jeff, for thank, joining us. Thank you for having us. us. You bet. And uh, hopefully the story that you share will be motivating people. And yeah, don't ever give up on your dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely.
Hi, Fuzzy. We are on to our next guest. Guess who it is? Okay, all right, I'll give you the answer. It is, or actually I should say, it's about the book called Actors Rendezvous. You probably have a good idea what it's about. Yes, it's about a journey in Los Angeles by an actor and what he's gone through all his ups and downs, okay? And I tell you, there's some pretty challenging and funny things about it. So help me welcome Richard Pines. We need to do it right, and we need to do it fast. I don't want any screw-ups. I don't know about you, but I've never screwed up. Well, there's a first time for everything. Make sure this isn't it. Is this when you're giving the orders? Since Jerome put me in charge. Why would Jerome trust you with the operation? Yeah, where is he anyway? He's not coming. Why? He's never missed a shipment before. Jerome isn't coming because we don't work for him anymore. If we don't work for Julian Jerome, then who do we work for? All right, come on, come on, let's move. The sooner we get out of here, the better. What? Freeze! PCPD! Hands up. Hey, nobody move. I want you all to keep your hands in the air and turn around slowly. And you all know the drill. Down on your knees and your hands behind your heads. That was some intense scene. Richard, welcome to our show. Tell us about that. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, that was a little clip from um, General Hospital, one of the longest running television shows a daytime uh, over 50 years and I uh, was out in Los Angeles the summer of 2013 and I took a uh, workshop with uh, Mark Teschner and the funny thing about Hollywood is that um, you never know 13 months later I got an email and Mark said I'd like to bring you on the show as a, uh, a hired gun so it worked out well very well now some people wait tables in Los Angeles others work as bar bartenders what do you do as, during the day? You mean keep your day job? Right, right. Uh, I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher for the uh, last 10 years. Uh, but I joined the Screen Actors Guild, actually became eligible uh, back in 1995. I worked on a film in San Diego, t made for TV, called The Corpse Has a Familiar Face. Uh, actually, at the time, starring uh, um, Elizabeth Montgomery and Dennis Farina who was in Law and Order. I was Dennis' stand-in. So I've been an actor on and off since 95, a lot of community theater in San Diego. But to pay the bills, I'm a certified teacher. And I recently took a little temporary early retirement. I've been a teacher uh, for the last 10 years. I started in Oakland, two years in Florida, and I spent the last seven years uh, working here uh, in Pima County as a certified government teacher. So that's how I kind of kept things moving. This passion for acting, how did this come about? Um, I've got to be honest, I got into it uh, accidentally. Mm. I was working for an attorney in San Diego, and at the time, Stu Siegel Productions was producing Renegade. And um, I walked into the office one day after I picked up some subpoenas from uh, the law firm I was working for, and I walked in there and said, do you ever need anybody in the background as an extra? And uh, they said, what are you doing next Tuesday? And um, I said, nothing. They said, well, we want you to be a mafia hitman. And uh, actually, that was in uh, the episode uh, Rabbit and the Fox. Mm -hmm. And you can still go on YouTube and see that. And I had like a 60-second bit in it, a little close-up. And um, I tried to shoot somebody in a phone booth. So from there, uh, I said I got the acting bug. And I took some classes at the Old Globe Theater and uh, did some community theater. But initially, to get into the business, all actors have a different story. Mine was accidental. And this worked out to uh, be to my advantage so far. The book that you recently wrote, what would the audience or what kind of person who has not been to Los Angeles expect from it? Well, the first three letters of your show would match it perfectly, motivate, educate, and laugh. Because the journey that I undertook, you had to be motivated. You have to educate yourself um, about the uh, industry, and you certainly have to be able to laugh. Uh, Actors Rendezvous came about while I was in Tucson a couple of years ago, and I said, you know, I'm going to move out there mm -hmm. and um, spend 30 days 
and just to really see what it's like to try to break in. I traveled 1,400 miles in 30 days. I visited 63 different casting directors, and basically it was a situation where knocking on doors and actors rendezvous, it, it's two pronged. For people that are not interested in it or just go to the movies, they can see what it's like to be somebody other than Brad Pitt or Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Not that they didn't have their struggles, okay. but also for the people that want to get into the business, um, this is what to expect if you walk into Los Angeles, uh, cold call. Okay, and for those who are young, aspiring actors, what can you suggest or recommend? If you're gonna move to Los Angeles, enroll in a university. Mm -hmm. Pursue your degree if you're into vocations. Pursue something in a vocational aspect. Get your education. And then attack Hollywood on your days off um, when you're not working, things of that nature. But I would never suggest for somebody to save $10,000 and drive out to Hollywood. Okay. Uh, I'm not to say they wouldn't make it. I would just have kind of a backup plan and educate myself because you can always work on breaking into Hollywood at any time or any age. Okay, if they would like to uh, get a copy of your book and we'd like to show the book right here, it, where can they or how can they um, get your information? Uh, you can go to my website, uh, Richard Pines, P-I-N-E-S, richardpinesactor.com and you can purchase a copy uh, there. Also on my website, you'll see a lot of different demo reels and you can enjoy some certain postings that I've put down just for the average actor on the street. So richardpinesactor.com or you can contact me directly at richardpinesgmail.com. Don't you look so excited. All right, how, ooh, that's a lot of enthusiasm. Hey, welcome again and we have George Dorward, our stained glass artist. Thank you for coming to our show, George. Welcome. And what do we have here? Well, I got into stained glass roughly 10 years ago. I was always fascinated by stained glass and every time I went into a church and looked at the stained glass windows, I was like dumbfounded how they did that. How did they get such beautiful colors? And, and I just decided to myself, I wanted to learn to do it. So I took one stained glass class, and uh, after that, I was a, just, it just fell into place. And then after I started doing stained glass, I wanted to learn how to do uh, dichroic jewelry, and I bought myself a little kiln, and uh, I learned to cut glass, and I asked questions when I went to the glass houses, and, and uh, I met some friends that did stained glass, and they taught me a little bit, but most of it's all practice and hands-on experience. But one thing about stained glass, you can do, you're your own artist. You can do anything you want, any colors you want. It's, uh, and you can put a lot of color in your life just by having a beautiful piece in your window. And uh, I did this one, I kind of copied this pattern off the internet a little bit, but then I changed colors and I changed some different things about it. I don't like to make the same piece twice. Mm 